What's going on, everybody? I just wanted to do a recap real quick of yesterday's debate. So I'll wait a few minutes for everybody to get in and just kind of premise it as everyone's getting in. If you haven't seen it, the link is in the bio. You could check it out on uh, Hotep Jesus's channel if you would like. Uh, it's always fun. I think it's always productive when two people come together. It definitely drives a lot of people to see stuff. It challenges people's views on both sides. So I, I consider it always a win to to one, watch them when it's two people I like, or at least one person I like. And being in it, uh, I love it because, you know, I talk on Twitter, I talk on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. I bring people on a lot on Instagram, but, uh, you know, it's nice to be challenged face to face as opposed to via text. And it's much better than arguing over Twitter. So I consider it a win, but I wanted to just kind of recap it how it came to be and what really went down, because obviously, you know, everybody has a different perspective, depending who you like, if you have a bias, if you like me, if you like him. Um, but I just want to be accurate about it. And I think it's, it's pretty standard and, and we'll see what you guys think, but I just want to go over it. So first of all, off, uh, no hard feelings. I, I think, you know, me and him are in good spirits after it. So, I, you know, he's got a, him and, and, uh, other hotel, you know, they got good last good soul when they're having fun. So, you know, he's a, he's a businessman and, I'm not, I still don't know. I'm not, I'm not being rude or I'm, I'm still not sure if he was playing devil's advocate just to get me on his channel. Because, you know, if you look at the views of that video, it's got almost 18,000 or something. Now it's more, it's more views than any video he's ever done since like his Dave Smith interview. So I'm not sure if that was his angle on getting me there, but I don't really care because I just want to spread the message. So, you know, it being on his channel, he gets the super chats, he gets a lot of traffic. I know he, he likes to make moves like that and get business. So it's no, it's, it's cool. I like to share and, and, and show love, but um, I'm not quite sure about the, the uh, you know, if he really believed what he was saying or not. And I'm not being rude. I'm just saying. So it came to be when I, I saw a video on his platform where, he was saying, essentially, you know, Anomaly made a whole album about Trump. Now he's saying Trump's establishment and pushing the vaccine. I want to debate Anomaly. So I took the bait because I wanted to debate. I was like, I didn't make a whole album about Trump. I made one song, uh, which so that was a lie. And then he said, uh, you know, you're saying Trump's establishment, which he ended up saying at the end of the debate. But then he said, you're saying Trump's pushing the vaccine. So I thought to myself, I, I would love to debate, but why is he lying about me making a whole album about Trump when he knows the song and he likes it? And also, you know, maybe that was just bait to get me there so he could get clicks and money and stuff, which is there's nothing wrong with. I don't care. I'm not being mean. It's like I don't I think that was kind of part of his win was like, you know, I don't care about the message or whatever. I just or, you know, I want I'll get the traffic. So we go on. And, uh, you know, after the jokes at the beginning, I know a lot of people I was reading in the comments. Um, you know, most people got it, but a lot of people are saying Anomaly was so rude. And, and, you know, he started this. If you really watch the debate, you watch it back, you watch it for the first time. For the first hour of the debate, I'm super calm, super respectful, not remotely, you know, uh, disrespectful at all. And his entire approach to me was condescending pompous and like, I'm so much smarter than you, misframing me, straw man attacks, you know, saying you're a Trump rapper. That's all you do is rap about Trump. It's not true. The song I like Trump doesn't even have a million views. I have 600 million views. It's it's a small part of what I've done. I appreciate it. I'm not mad at the song I made, but he's trying to frame me as this character who obsesses over Trump, who worshiped him, who who made an album about him. And that the whole premise of the debate, whether people realize it or not, was fake. He's lying about that. I don't know if he's purposely doing it for clout and to get the clicks and to debate me, but it's just not true. So I, you know, I was setting the record straight from the beginning. It's like, that's never been who I was. And you know that, or you don't. And I'm going to tell you, so I, I think if you watch it back and you're honest, you'll see that I wasn't I wasn't out the gate rude. I wasn't out the gate disrespectful. I was kind. I was calm. I was reasonable. And I was destroying the debate. And he was, you know, condescending pompous. And, you know, the first jabs were taken by him. He said, you're sniffing Trump's ass. He said to me like 30, 40 minutes in, if you watch it back, I didn't say anything to him at that point. He's pushing at me and basically like saying, you know, your I'm questioning your character. I'm questioning your intelligence. I'm questioning your loyalty. And I wasn't questioning any of that of his because I don't really care that much. So to the comments that are saying, you know, uh, oh, Anomaly's de defensive. Uh, it's, it's not like a emotional defense. The whole premise of the debate was him trying to attack every angle of my argument. So, yeah, I'm defending when he brings up eight tweets. What It's like people who are like, oh, he shouldn't have done that. I'm, I, I watched it back and I'm like, 
what am I supposed to do? Just roll over and be like, oh yeah, you're right. I'm so stupid. I don't know anything. You're a genius. Like that's, that's almost what some people wanted me to do as if I was rude. So if you, if you watch the argument back or the debate rather, he was rude. He was condescending. He was pompous. He was taking jabs at my character, full of straw man arguments, ad hominem attacks, full of mischaracterizations of who I am, what I did, what I've created and who I was in regards to Trump. And then for the first 30 minutes, it was him defending Trump as it, I, I'm, he's a very masterful psychologist. I'm not saying he, he sells books, advertising. He's good at psychology, making his audience think he's super, super smart. And they're like, whoa, I'm amazed by his wizardry. But it's really like a lot of, you know, in my opinion, media deception where it's like him acting like he's way smarter than he is. So for the th first 30 minutes. He's pompous. He's arrogant. He's condescending. He's taking jabs at me every which way. I'm just crushing his debate. He's saying I'm sniffing Trump's ass. That was the first big jab. You're, you sniff Trump's ass. Meanwhile, the whole debate, he's literally doing that. And I'm actually opposing Trump and disagreeing with him as he's defending Trump. And as soon as I crushed him on the lockdowns, he switched completely and went from defending Trump to saying I knew he was a puppet all along. And it's like his base didn't even realize the wizardry. It's like watching CNN. They're like, whoa, I that's what he was doing. So it's like, on one hand, he's accusing me of doing what he's doing, projection tactics. And then on the other hand, as soon as he gets, he loses the debate. And I watched his, uh, I watched his Lupe fiasco debate because I agree with Hotep on that debate. I agree. I'm not pro, you know, medical, like, you know, the vagine, as he would say. I agree with Hotep over Lupe, but Lupe was prepared and Hotep, Hotep didn't even know what mRNA stood in mRNA vaccine. I, th I thought he made kind of a fool of himself, even though I agree with his argument where it's like, how are you going to bring up mRNA vaccines? You don't even know it stands for messenger RNA. Like he looked dumb. So it's like his audience, no, they think he's like super smart, but he, he, his arguments are pretty weak. So when he talked about the lockdowns, you know, he didn't have his dates right. He's like, well, Trump was opposed to it the whole time. And I was like, no, he wasn't. So every time he tried to say something, I calmly and respectfully countered with facts and dates. And as soon as he realized that he was wrong, he completely switched, said, you're sniffing Trump's ass. You're a Trump supporter. You can't say this. You can't think this way. And then took the other stance and said, I knew he was an establishment puppet all along. And I'm thinking to myself, the whole reason you brought me here was probably just to make money, which is smart business wise, but ethically and morally, I think it makes you look kind of weak. But uh you know, the whole premise of, of you bringing was anomaly saying Trump's establishment. And then as soon as you lose the debate trying to defend Trump, you switch and say Trump is establishment, but I'm better than you and superior because I knew it all along. Once again, creating this false premise that I never questioned in my mind if Trump was like a deity. I always thought he was crushing it. And, uh, you know, I was on channels in 2019 saying Trump's a Zionist, Trump's this. And I never said, oh, you're wrong. Shut up. I love him. He's the best. I, I was never that person. I always said, I hear what you're saying. I respect you. I agree with you, but I'm impressed with Trump's doing at the point. So as far as his connections, we'll see what happens. Actions speak louder than words. I was never this blind worshiper. And you could really see what he didn't want to talk about when I brought up Zionism and the anti-Semitism speech bills. All of a sudden, you know, he was like, whoa, don't say that. I don't know what you're talking about. Like playing stupid as if he doesn't know what I'm talking about because he's afraid to talk about Zionism. So to me, I appreciate the debate, I, but it's an act, he's an actor. Hotep's an actor. You know, he's he's acting for his audience, pretending like he doesn't know what Zionism is, pretending like he opposes Trump, pretending like he supports Trump. How do you, you know? I don't know where the guy stands. I don't I don't know. I don't know if he was just playing devil's advocate to get a good debate out of me, which is fine. It's a win win. You know, he does well. I do well. Uh, people learn stuff and it's just a win win win. Are both our channels grow? It's not a big deal. But I'm not I'm not even joking or being rude. I, I legitimately don't know if he believes what he was saying or he was just doing it to, you know, get a reaction and get get money. So, you know, that's that's not the type of people that I'm I, I appreciate him and I'll check out his stuff. But, you know, I, it's not really my thing where it's like you're saying one thing, you're saying the other thing. You're being condescending and emotional and pompous. And then I defend myself. And at a certain point, I just said, you know, you could you could never do what I do. And it's not like I walk around with a huge ego and just tell everybody I'm so great. But when I'm listening to somebody like Hotep Jesus talk down to me for an hour, like I'm a baby, like he's super smart, lose a debate for 40 minutes, even his supporters. So I blew him out of the water with everything in the lockdowns because he doesn't know that much. And then he completely switched sides of the debate mid debate and went from saying Trump did everything he could with the lockdowns. And I, I proved it wrong. So he said, well, what would you expect? Trump was a puppet. That's pretty clowny. I, you know, it's like I don't. I maybe that fools his audience because he has him under a spell, like he's this, you know, like Shannon Sharp when he puts on the 
you know, he puts on those like hipster glasses and acts like he's an intellectual. But for me, I was like, not that impressed. And I think it goes a long distance to, to see the two videos that are the most viewed on his channel. The two videos that are most viewed in the last few months are the debate I just had, which has more views than anything he's done in three months, and his interview with Dave Smith. And I think the reason those get more views is because Dave Smith is a moral guy. He has character, he has moral, he's authentic, and he means what he says. So people flock to Hotep Jesus' channel to watch Dave Smith talk because people like Dave Smith because he's a, a charactered and principled person with honor. And that's what I am. So with Hotep, it's like this big magician thing where he's playing both sides of the angle. It's like this whole illusion that he's like really woke. And, you know, I find it fascinating, I think, with, um, you know, that interview and, and young Pharaoh, you know, God bless Pharaoh, respect to him, that the way that Hotep Jesus talked to me for the first hour, condescending, pompous, down, you sniff Trump's ass, you know, I'm questioning your character, I'm questioning your morals. I didn't flinch for the first hour. I didn't say anything rude or disrespectful. But if Hot if somebody spoke to Hotep Jesus that way, he would have been emotional, crying like he did in the Brandon Tatum interview. So, and the same with Young Pharaoh. You know, he always says, I, I saw his interview with uh, the Kill Stream with Ralph Retort. And, uh, you know, I thought the Ralph Retort people did not that great of a job. But you have Young Pharaoh there basically disrespecting their ancestors for an hour. And then they say one thing and Young Pharaoh freaks out and says, you're disrespecting my ancestors. You're disrespecting my ancestors. And I agree with what he's saying. As a man, you should stand up for your family. But the, the Hotep and Young Pharaoh types, it's like they dish it out and then play the victim when someone gives it out. If you put Young, young Pharaoh in a debate with Young Pharaoh, a white Young Pharaoh and a black Young Pharaoh, they would hate each other. Within a minute, they'd be arguing the whole time, threatening each other. If you put Hotep Jesus in a debate with Hotep Jesus, they would be emotional against each other because he wouldn't allow someone to talk to him like he talked to me. So uh, if you watch the debate back, you can see that I didn't start it. I didn't. I, didn't, I wasn't emotional. I was just a strong man. So when I get talked down to by an hour for someone who is benefiting from me being there because people only go to his channel to watch me and Dave Smith, after an hour of being talked down to, after an hour of being my character question, after an hour of him Re reading my tweets that I could easily explain because they made sense, you know, after him trying to have his gotcha moment, after him saying I'm sniffing Trump's ass as he's sniffing Trump's ass, after him saying I knew Trump was a puppet, after luring me to a bait by saying you think Trump's a puppet? Well, I know he's a puppet. You know, after an hour of him talking to me like that, I, as a man, I'm going to look into the camera and I'm going to say, uh, and when he say, I can't fathom how you feel. I can't fathom what you think. You can't fathom because you're not me. You're, and you're, you can never be me. So that's why you can't figure out how, because I'm me and you're you, but I don't talk to you the way you're talking to me. But after an hour, of it, I'm going to let you in as a man. You could never be me. And he pretty much agreed and was like, well, yeah, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a strong man moment. It's not emotional. I didn't cry. I wasn't angry. I wasn't frustrated. I'm just listening to somebody who is running in circles, dancing like a CNN magician, taking both sides of the argument, playing devil's advocate, defending Trump for 30 minutes, getting blown out of the water. And then as soon as he can't defend Trump anymore, because like in the Lupe debate, although he might have a point, he's not really well educated on the points he's talking about. Then he flips to the other side of the argument. And the only way he could do that by agreeing with what I was saying is by agreeing with me, but then painting me as this person who never knew that that was a possibility from 2016 to 2020. I never said that there's not things Trump isn't doing. I was on uh, platforms with people who said Trump was a puppet in 2018, 2019. And I always said, listen, he's in the game. Like, like Hotep said, there's things he's going to do. There's things he's not going to do. But as a citizen, I was impressed until 2020, 2020 is when things went downhill and you know, the excuses were, were worn out. So I just want to set the record straight. There's no bad feelings. There's no ill intent. I would get on a chat and talk, but I'm just, I'm just saying in general, to the comments who say that I got rude and disrespectful out of the blue, I think you should watch the video back because for the first hour, I did nothing but just say facts. And it was him talking to me like a pompous, arrogant toddler. And if I were to speak to him that way for an hour, he would have lost his cool in 10 minutes. And I didn't lose my cool. I just looked at the camera and said, you could never be me. It's like, okay, your, your two biggest interviews in the last three months are me and Dave Smith. People like me and people like Dave Smith, because we have morals, we have integrity, we have honor, we have courage, and we mean what we say. I don't know what he says, because I don't think he means what he says. He's like Joe Rogan. One day Joe Rogan's this way. One day he's that way. Some people like it. It's good for podcasts and it's good for debate. It's good to get people riled up so they click and watch this video and his videos. But as far as me, consumer-wise, I'm not that interested in it, because I, I don't know who Joe Rogan is, because he pretends to be different people all the time. 
And that's like Hotep. It's like, I don't, I don't know his character. I don't know that he, I, you know, it's like, he's questioning me for an hour and I'm so, and people are like, why are you, what you want me to just roll over and be like, Oh, that's, that's his whole shtick is acting superior to everyone writing these books saying I'm an intellectual masculine wizard. If you want to know how to be a man like me, uh, you know, read my book and click on the, and there's nothing wrong with that. Ty Lopez does it. He does it. It's a great business. You know, you, maintain this character and persona and then people pay you to learn things about marketing but when you talk to me uh that way it, it doesn't work out but for some people it's like you know he's submitting his audience so he has a bunch of like submissive people that are like man he's so smart it's like if honest people watch his watch that debate back i did not start being rude i didn't start being arrogant i didn't start being disrespectful it was an hour of him being passive aggressive condescending pompous flip-flopping, straw man argument, character assassination, trying to have a gotcha moment on me, failing every single time, going 0 for 15 to the point where even his own audience was like, bro, you're losing pretty bad. And then he flip-flopped and said, I knew Trump was a puppet and you're, you know, you worshiped him all the time, which is categorically false as far as anybody who's watched me since 2017, including him, because, you know, when, when everybody turned on him from TPUSA, it was me who put him on my platform and, and gave him a platform to speak because they called him anti-Semitic when he wasn't, uh, which is ripe. When I bring up Zionism on his plat platform, he acts like he doesn't know what it is. He's like, whoa, I, I don't want to say that. So who are you, bro? You're this, you're this. You don't want to say that. You're, what are you afraid to say it? Why are you afraid to say it? You don't you don't even have a big channel. I have you know, I make uh, probably a lot more money on here and have a lot more to lose. And I'm willing to say it. So why are, why won't you say it on your own channel? He's afraid to say Zionism. He's afraid to talk about the anti-Semitism bill. Dude, I have one of the biggest Facebook pages in the world, and I'm not bragging. It's just a fact. I have 1.5 million views, 600 million, uh, 1.5 million likes, 600 million views, and I'm getting 5 to 10 million views. And I'm on the top 10 list in all of America every week, and I'm not afraid to say it. And you have a little dinky channel where the only time you can get views is with me or Dave Smith because people like authenticity, and you're afraid to talk about one of the core issues in America and you're, and then you're going to talk down to me for an hour. Like you're this wizard of intellectual and moral superiority. And you know about the Rothschilds, but you won't talk about Zionism. The whole, the whole, it's all an act. He's an actor. He's a good actor, an actor that can convince a small group of people to worship him like a cult. But as far as, uh, you know, in an arena with me, I wasn't being rude or disrespectful after an hour of him playing himself, losing the debate, acting pompous and condescending. I just said, bro, you could never be me. And he pretty much submit to that fact because he knows, you know, I'm, I'm running circles around him. So it's not it's not so much. I don't walk around saying that, but it's it's equivalent to like, you know, playing a sport or somebody stepping to you. I'm a nice guy. Uh, but if somebody tries to force a mask on me, I don't submit. It's not my ego saying, oh, I'm too egotistical to put a mask on to walk into this restaurant. That's not why I don't put a mask on. I do it out of principle. And I also do it because I just don't think it's right. And the more that people submit, the more it happens. So I, I don't do it because my ego is huge. I'm like, I'm not wearing a mask in your restaurant. And I want you guys to wake up because you're hurting people. You're hurting children. You're hurting elders. It's bad what you're doing. And somebody needs to tell you. And I'm not going to submit because I don't think it's right. It's the same thing to him. I'm not being rude. And I'm not, I don't have an ego saying that to him. He's talking to me pompous for an hour and he doesn't know what he's talking about. So it's just me letting him know I'm not submitting to this idea that you're this intellectual deity that's so much above me, which you guys don't understand. But he does because he's good at psychology. That's his whole shtick. He acts like he's this calm sage, but he's really talking down to, to me the whole time. The pompous, arrogant, you're sniffing Trump's ass, you're doing this. So he wants me to submit. That's his whole shtick is like him flexing on guys and then and then them saying oh my god let me read his book oh man maybe i could be as manly as him if i give him 30 dollars and read his book on how to be manly that's this whole shit but it doesn't work to me so as a man after an hour of destroying him intellectually morally ethically and on every level and him flip-flopping five different times and straw man argument i looked in the camera and i said you could never be me it's not ego it's a man check saying bro you played yourself you lost the debate yeah, you know, and I'm not just going to sit here and roll over and let you bully me when you're not on my level. That's exactly what it was. And I think if people watch the video back, they'll realize that I was not rude. I didn't start it. I just in general, uh, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a pushover. And I know people want me to be one. But, you know, that's that's just not the way the world works. And I uh, 
I blocked some guy, uh, you know, Israel Anderson. He's been messaging me for years. I want to go to dinner. I want to get lunch with you, blah, blah, blah. Sending me all these things about how he thinks he knows who Jesus is or whatever. That's fine. I, I was always cool with him. And then he, he messages me and says, and Emily, you should have done this in the debate. Bro, I don't. Uh, it's like some people have nerve. I'm not a rude person, but I'm doing a lot. I'm busy. I'm blessed. I'm fortunate. I'm working hard. I'm I'm self-confident in the fact that I think I'm doing good work and I don't walk around messaging other people telling them that, that them what to do. So this guy Israel comes in my DMs and says, I'm it's like, bro, I don't need unsolicited advice from you. I, you know, I, I could give you unsolicited advice, but I don't because that's a weirdo move. So that's the dynamic of it. It's like people think I'm being rude, but it's like I could give unsolicited advice to people in DMs, but that's I don't do that because I don't think I should. If people ask me for a question, I'll answer it. So people do this to me. It's an instant block. It's like, I'm not you, bro. You're not me. And that's fine. It's like, you want me to be you. I don't want to be you. And that's kind of the vibe I have with Hotep Jesus. It's like, he's he's making this argument like, oh, this is what I think. I don't care what you think because everything you thought I just destroyed and you had to flip flop and straw man for an hour. So you're only fooling your audience that you're like super calm and super wise. Like, you know, you, you got owned and I let them know, you know, that's what it is. It's like, I'm not going to roll over and just take unsolicited advice from people who are qualified. Uh, Abe Tapia said, I enjoyed the talk yesterday. I like you both. Talks like this reaffirm I follow the right people. Well, yeah, I mean, it, you know, there's there's value everywhere. If you laugh, I think him and Uncle Hotep are really funny. Like when they're going off, they could keep it real and they're really funny. And same with uh, same with Young Pharaoh. As much as we argued, I never thought I would that would happen. Like, uh, you know, when I went on High Impact Flicks, People don't realize when they're like, why are you doing this? I like High Impact Flicks now. I like Brian. We've chatted. He's a good guy. But he brought me on his channel to try to make me look stupid. That's just what he did. He brought me on his channel to try to say Anomaly's a hypocrite, Anomaly's a phony, and I blew him out of the water because I'm none of the sorts, and he played himself. And it's the same thing with Hotep Jesus. I don't know if he was playing devil's advocate for the grift or he believes himself, but his premise was to, to bring me on, to bring up old tweets and say, Anomaly's a phony. Anomaly's not smart. Anomaly doesn't know he's talking about. He's a flip flopper. He's a fake. He, you know, and I, I destroyed him too. So it's like, I'm not a fake. I have nothing to hide. I go on their platforms because I'll walk into the lion's den and I'll win. And, and But people need to understand when I do that, I can't be flimsy. I know people want me to just sit there and be weak, but it's not a conversation. If you listen to me talk to people on Instagram, I'm the nicest guy. If you know, I have good energy and I'm trying to lift people up and enjoy myself. But when I'm brought onto somebody's channel for the sole purpose of them trying to make me look bad, or at least them trying to get me with a gotcha moment, I can't just sit here and roll over. I know people like some people are like, you know, you shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't. Have, that's not how it works. It's not. A, it's like going on to CNN. You know, that's why I like Trump. Trump was destroying the media. Did you ever hear me from 2000 to 2019 say, oh, Trump shouldn't say that. Trump shouldn't say this. No, keep saying all that. Just be honest. I don't care how ruthless you are to the media. They deserve it. Be ruthless. Be in their face. Tell them that they suck. I love that because he was real. I stopped being, uh, you know, as impressed when he stopped being real, when he started selling Moderna and Pfizer products and just that. And that's the whole premise of the debate. And there's nothing wrong with learning. There's nothing wrong with growing and there's nothing wrong with uh, voting for someone or not voting for someone and having the ability to compliment them or disagree with them when they do something right or wrong. That's called common sense. That's called being a smart citizen who doesn't, you know, just roll over for a politician. There's nothing wrong with that. So these people bring me on their platform People need to understand they're, you know, they, they have multiple reasons, but it's like, I, I don't bring people on my platform to do that. They're bringing me on their platform because they see me and say, I think he's a fake. I don't think he's right. I think he flip flopped. Did you, have you seen me do that to Hotep? No, I brought him on my platform and I had a conversation. I went on his platform. We had a conversation. This was him trying to get a gotcha and he got got. And the only way he can you know, get around that is just to fool people into thinking he, you know, this little game. But I, I think honest people will look back. I did not start being rude. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just not a pushover. So that's uh, that's what it is. There's no hard feelings. It's all love. I had a great time and I'll continue to, you know, debate and converse with anybody that wants to get a little gotcha moment on me because it never works out for them. So, you know, I don't there's there's no mystery in how I feel. And I'm very upfront about how I feel, you know, even in 2018 and 17, the, the videos I was making were so effective, 
wasn't because I was a Trump sycophant. That was he was trying to paint me as that the whole conversation. It, look at my video of why I like Trump. It's the 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 one that Brandon you know Straka pretty much just like reinvented, and he told me that basically. Like I saw your video and it made me want to do this one. I said I like Trump. I used to lean left. This is why I like him. Not because I'm blown over. You know that's the that's the entire energy that I have that I think has been so successful because I'm not just screaming build a wall because I'm not just wearing Trump hats and screaming MAGA MAGA MAGA. So him trying to paint me as that type of person because I made one song. Uh, is totally disingenuous. The whole premise of his argument, everything he was saying was all false. And I pointed that out, uh, you know, so I, I don't know. Everybody will interpret it how they interpret it. People will see how they want to see it. But, you know, people that like me giving me unsolicited advice, it's like, bro, I, I don't give you unsolicited. Like people give me advice like I want to be them. You know, I don't, <laughs> I'm good. You you do you. Um Teddy said he was trying to gaslight you and, and, and got called out. It was weird that people couldn't see that. Yeah, I mean, if you if you honestly and I'm a I'm a self-aware person. So I went and, and I don't watch all my videos like that. I'm not a creepo, but like I watched, you know, sometimes I'll rewatch a debate because it's like a thing. And I, I rewatch it. And when I watched it, I did better than I thought I even did in the moment. Like I watched it back and I was like, yeah, I, I could see the first hour that he was all straw man attacks, all ad hominems, all you know, passive aggressive uh, arrogance, all this persona of I'm big man, you're small man. And I'm, you know, I'm so much superior in thinking. Uh, I support Trump, but I know he's a puppet, but I'm going to defend him. But you're defending him. It was like his, his debate was sloppy. I, I, you know, I watched it back and I was like, I don't, everyone's going to interpret how they interpret it, but I don't see how an honest person wouldn't see all the straw. Like every time I debunked an argument, he'd make up this like, filibuster question out of nowhere like would you vote for trump over kamala like yeah of course probably most definitely like, i'm not either i'm sitting out the election or i'm voting for trump i'm not voting for kamala but like what does that have to do with anything like his his debate tactics were super you know disingenuous and it was all based off a premise of i'm this person i'm not and i never would say he's this person he's not you know like I, i've uh, i've always thought that he was unique and he was not just an NPC. That's why I've always liked the Hoteps. They're not non-playable characters. They have a soul and a spirit and they're questioning things, you know, I, and, and I still think that like the Hoteps are not just followers of, you know, uh, the Republican talking points. So I don't, I don't know. I honestly, when it's all said and done and, and, you know, I don't know what people would think. I personally think that he was doing it just to get traffic. I think his supporters will think he won, but he won in the sense of like, he got more subscribers. And I think that's what he want. When he asked what I wanted, you know, I want to make an impact, but I don't have this thirst for money and power. Uh, you know, he wants to be a billionaire and there's nothing wrong with that. And, and he has great things that he's helping out. I have my things, everyone's different, but I'm just saying like, I'm not the type of person to play devil's advocate and lie and, and put on this magician show to try to gain power. And that's the type of person he seems like, where it's like he's willing to flip flop, play both sides of the argument, put on this show and be an actor for his audience to pretend like he's both people at once or something. And it's just not my, it's not what I'm into as far as like consuming. And it's not, it's, it's not who I am. So I'm not, you know, it is what it is. Read some comments. Becky said, I feel like HJ brought you in just to attack you and try to make you look bad. He had no intention of debating. Well, that that's the point I'm really trying to get across is, uh, you know, when him and High Impact, who, and I like them both, but they're not bringing me on their channel. Like I've been on Hotep's channel and we had a conversation and he was complimenting me and, you know, and I, I don't need all that. I'm just saying like, there's a difference between a friendly conversation and stepping into the arena. His whole you know, uh, premise of his debate, whether he really believed himself or not, was I'm going to make Anomaly look like a hypocrite. I want to make Anomaly look like a flip flopper. I have tweets, I have dates, and he failed to do that. So, you know, he started with weirdo tactics and stuff. And then I just flexed on him real quick. But yeah, how people act, I saw one comment, you're acting defensive. What it's not like a emotional, passive aggressive defensive. It's like, he's shooting arrows at me trying to expose my armor and I'm just deflecting them. That's all I was doing. I wasn't there shooting arrows at him. He, you know, he's like, here's what you did. Here's what you said. Here's who are you. This is your lyrics. This is that, this is that, this is who you are. You're this type of person. And I'm just swatting all the arrows for an hour. Swat, 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 swat. That's so of course, yeah, I'm defending against his 
false premises. And then after an hour and 20 minutes of him trying to act like he's super, you know, above, I just checked, I checked his ego and said, I don't, you can't fathom what I'm saying. Cause you're not me. So, you know, I don't, I don't think it was even watching it back. I don't even think it was that rude, but people are, are, have been conditioned to think that kindness is weakness and weakness is kindness. Putting on a mask just to do what's right, that's not kind, you're hurting people, you're hurting children, you're hurting elders, you're hurting the country, that hurts. Being a coward, being afraid of saying what's real because you're afraid of the consequences, that doesn't make you a moral leader, it makes you a coward. You know, they, they control people via fear. So there's a difference between being kind and weak. And I think people get that mixed up. And with me, I'm a nice guy for sure, but I'm not a pushover. And I know a lot of people want me to be because I'm super, super nice and I'm super, super kind in most of my streams when I'm not going off about a certain topic. But, you know, as far as in the right arena, I'm not going to let a a pharaoh or a a hotep just walk all over me like that. That's their whole energy. It's like they try to sun people and be like, I'm the big boy in town and you're this and that. And it's like, it's, you know, as, as as somebody who does this pretty much full time like this, it's not going to work on me. So I know people want me not to say stuff or not to do stuff. And, you know, hindsight is 2020, but I stand by everything I said and did because I I watched it back and I was like, people are tripping if they think that I started this or I, uh, you know, I said something rude first. Like, you know, if, if, if I were talking to him, like he was talking to me, he would have lost it within 10 minutes because, you know, even me saying one little thing, he was like, what would you mean by that? I'm not doing that. It's like, bro, if, <laughs> if I was talking to you, like you were talking to me, you would have lost it within five minutes. That's, that's the disconnect I think with him and Pharaoh is I, I like them both. I agree with them, but I think if they met themselves and had a debate with themselves that they would instantly hate each other and they would fight and argue and cry. And, you know, like they, they wouldn't get along because they, they want other people to pretty much just submit to them. That's like their whole thing. It's like, submit to me. I'm the leader. And that's, it's an alpha move. It's like, you know, there's a video where it's uh, Dave Portnoy in a room with a Guy Fieri, very random, but Guy Fieri just sons Dave Portnoy. And it's the craziest thing because Dave Portnoy is super macho and super alpha and Guy Fieri just sons him so hard. And he just like submits to Guy Fieri. You got to watch it. It's hilarious. But like, Certain people, that's their persona. It's like, I'm the alpha, you're the beta. So as, as you know, it's it's not me being rude or disrespectful. When you debate a pharaoh or you debate a, a, a hotep, that's the angle he's going for. I'm smarter than you. I'm better than you. I've known it longer than you. You're a phony. You're a flip-flopper. So after an hour of that, either you submit to it and be like, oh my God, you're so right. But I'm like, not only are you not right, not only did I not just destroy you in the first 50 minutes and you were, uh, you know, the condescending one, but I'm going to tell you that, you know, there's a reason that you can't fathom in your mind why I did what I did is because you're not me. That's why when you go to Yehotep Jesus's channel, the top two viewed videos are me and it's only been 10 hours and Dave Smith because Dave Smith is a man of principle, of virtue, of wisdom. And Dave Smith is not an actor. Dave Smith is not somebody who plays a role to impress people or to grift in a, in a debate. Honor is winning a debate and losing money. Not having honor is making money and losing a debate just for the grift. This is why America is in the place it's in, because people don't have honor. People would be willing to sell their soul for a million dollars. I'm not that type of person, and I'm not just saying that. I mean it. When I say I'm willing to go the distance of what I believe, it's not a talking point. It's just I don't have it in me to be a sellout. So I just want to say that there's a reason that his two viewed videos are Dave Smith. Dave Smith means what he says. When Hotep Jesus talks, I like I like his angle. I like certain takes, but I don't think he means what he says. I still don't know if he really truly believes what he was debating because for the first half, he debated how Trump did everything he could with the lockdowns. And then the second half, he debated that Trump was a puppet and he knew it the whole time. And he lured me into the debate by saying that I'm a bad, I'm a flip flopper for saying Trump was a puppet. And he, and in order to do that, it's one thing to say that, but he had to paint me out as this guy who was always just a Trump sycophant. And and that's never been my angle from the very beginning of getting people to realize he wasn't that bad. My whole angle and everybody who knows uh, me watch and watches me knows this was the opposite. It was like, he's the guy who's not really a normal conservative. I relate to him. I hear that a lot of liberals heard me, including Brandon Straka, people like Candace and like, 
oh, okay, that makes sense. You know, I never heard it because they're just yelling, build a wall. But so that's what Hotep's trying to paint me to his audience, which is small. So it doesn't really matter. Most of them already know me, but it's like, you know, anomaly was this person. Anomaly is it's like, no, that's like me sitting there for an hour saying, Hotep, Jesus is this. Hotep, Jesus is that. Hotep, I didn't, you know, so <laughs> people are out of their mind if they think I started anything. It's like, bro, watch the tape back. You know, he, if I talked to him the way he talked to me, he would have had a meltdown within two minutes. I kept it cool for an hour, destroyed him in a debate, and then calmly and strongly said, you can never be me because it's true. And it's, it's a factual statement. It's confident. It's a little braggadocious, but after an hour of condescending flip-flop actor talk, yeah, I'm going to put him in his place. Be like, okay, here's your views. You got your views? Talk to Dave Smith and get some views because Dave Smith believes what he says. I believe what I say. I don't know that he believes what he says, which is fine for a certain extent, but I think, you know, there's a, there's a reason that Dave Smith is, is bringing home the bacon for Hotep Jesus and not Hotep Jesus. You know, my videos on my channel – my last video in the last two weeks that got the most views is me talking about Kerry Mullis. I'm promoting his book uh, for free. I'm not even making anything out of it. I'm getting millions of views talking about other people. Hotep Jesus can't get views unless he brings on me or Dave Smith. What does that say about him? People don't really care what he has to say because he's not that authentic and he's not as enlightening as he pretends to be. And there's nothing wrong with it, but an hour of assault from him acting like he's some sort of wizard, I'm going to be like, bro, I, I run circles around you when I'm sleeping. So I don't know. I don't I don't know. You know, I'm not I'm not submitting to this idea that you know what you're talking about. So, you know, it's a it's like a boxing match. That's what you do. You talk shit and then you have a debate. You know, it's, it's not it's not that personal. It's not that real. I'm a I'm going to read um, a few comments and then I'll, I'll probably head out. So once, I'm going to read this real quick. Anomaly, th uh, Rachel Cohen, what's up? I am a fervent fan. Please do not say Zionist negatively. All Jews are Zionists believing in the Jewish state. Well, here's here's the thing. First of all, when I say Zionist, I don't always say it negatively. I'm just saying a fact. The Republican Party is a Zionist party. You know that's true. They worship Israel. They pass beach laws for them. Both parties give aid to Israel. Both parties are essentially Zionists, although one is more Bolshevik. So it's not necessarily negative. And it's also, I think, a lie that all Jews are Zionists. I've seen videos of Hasidic Jews who are like more religiously Jewish than you are, and they're anti-Zionism. So I agree that most Jews are Zionists, no question. And I, I, I don't disrespect uh, anybody. I, I don't disrespect your land. I'm just an American citizen, and I don't like the fact that a foreign country is basically puppeting and possibly blackmailing on my politicians to the point where, you know, we can't get anything done in this country. So it's no disrespect to Israel. It's no disrespect to Zionists. I have, I'm, I'm great friends with Roseanne. She's a fervent Zionist. Does, does, does she not like me? No, she loves me. I hope I love her. You know, we hang out. Uh, it's fine. You know, I have, I have a lot of Zionist friends. There's no, I'm just, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm anti-Zionist, but I don't like the fact that I think, you know, a lot of these Zionist politicians are running us into the ground. So one, it's not true that all Jews are Zionists, but most are. And two, I'm not saying it negatively, but you have to understand when I talk about it, I'm saying it in the context of our politicians are so sold out and they, they don't serve American interests. You know, we can't get anything done because you have a group of people who are funding both sides of politics to accomplish goals at the expense of America. So that that's my problem. I don't have a problem with Israel. I don't have a problem with Jews. That's a straw man argument. I just don't like the fact that we don't have a true nationalist movement in this country because the right wing is more of a Zionist party and you can't serve two masters. So if it was America first, Israel second, that's fine, but it's not. It's Israel first, America second. We always play second fiddle. That's, that's my thought. I'm gonna read the two super chats. Someone said Hotep's whole premise was I knew Trump was fake, so I never called him on anything, but yet I like Trump because he's real, LMAO. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I know he's got a lot of fans, but how can anyone watch that and take it seriously? It's like, that's exactly right. His whole premise was like, I knew Trump was fake, but the first 40 minutes he's defending him fervently. And then as soon as he can't defend him, it's, I know Trump's fake and you didn't, and you're this big Trump fanatic. It's like, bro, go to Hotep Jesus's Instagram. He's got like five pictures of him photoshopped with Trump in it. It's like, that's fine, but yeah, the hypocrisy and the projection was wild. Kay Wickham said you crushed it once again. Don't change a thing, fam. Straight fire. Appreciate you. Um, 
Someone said Israel's getting the vax first. Ha ha. Well, here's here's my thing. And and, and uh, Rachel or whatever your name was, I want you to hear this because I, I really want people to understand. I think even with Israel and, and the Jewish community, and this is like when people talk about the black community, when Candace talks about the black community, I don't think she hates black people. I think she's going extra hard on black people because she loves them and she wants them to be better. When I go at America and Republicans, I don't hate Republicans. I'm going hard at Republicans because I like Republicans. I'm a registered Republican, to be quite frank at this point. And I want people to get smarter so we can actually conserve something. So it's the same thing with Is Israel, Israel, excuse me, and Jewish. It's like, I feel like because of all this victim mentality, the same way it is in the black community, it's almost stronger in the Jewish community where you can't say anything. And the result has been Israel has become a lockdown vaccine state. And that, in my opinion, roots from, you know, lack of accountability and, and awareness. So it's like, it's actually toxic for the Jewish community to never take any blame, never take anything. It's, it's always everyone else's fault. We never did anything. In his, it's like, that's not accurate history. And it's going to, it's going to hurt Jews. You know, it's not just going to hurt America. It's going to hurt Jews because at a certain point you have to realize there's other bad people out there, but in the community, the ADL, Sasha Barrett Cohen, like these people need to chill out and stop using their Jewish victim card to essentially overturn the constitution. You know, it's not going to work out for America and it's not working out for Israel. I feel bad for these Jews getting kicked off planes. You know, I, I feel bad for Israel. I feel bad that they're in this lockdown state because they have psycho Jewish leaders. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't think that's nice. So I'm not, I'm not being mean. I just, I think they need to be challenged a little bit. Uh, Melissa said, I'm Jewish. Zionism isn't a great thing. Definitely not in the USA's interest. It's just, if you go to the roots of Zionism, it's it's a it's a movement that at this point, and I think what is founded, it's basically like this is going to be at the head of it. So their main goal, like for instance, Sheldon Adelson, before he passed, rest in peace, was a big Republican donor. I have no problem with Sheldon Adelson, Mil billionaire. You know, I'm sure we'd get along if we were in the same room. But when he gives $100 million to the Republican Party, he's not doing it for me. He's doing it for Israel. And he basically admits that. But then he passes speech laws to say that you can't say he's doing it. And it's the same with Sasha Barrett Cohen and like uh, Howard Stern, who are both Jewish. They made a living being dirty and raunchy and grimy. And I always liked Howard Stern and I always and, and I always liked Sasha Barrett Cohen. In fact, I love Sasha Barrett Cohen. I, I used to love Ali G and Borat. I used to watch it with my Jewish friend. He was the one who put me onto it. And he was like, bro, this guy's hilarious. And now Sasha Bear Cohen works with the ADL to try to stop other people from doing what he's doing. And you have Howard Stern, you know, acting like Trump is too raunchy. It's like, bro, you're Howard Stern. You're Stephen King. He's not Jewish, but it's like Stephen King's doing the same thing. It's like F him too. So that's, that's kind of my whole premise is like, it's not, you know, these people need to stop being so hypocritical, but they hide behind the Jewish card in the same way that certain black people hide behind the black card. It's not when I push against that, they try to act as if I'm pushing against the entire race or the entire country. And it's simply not true. And if you know, you know, on, on, on here, it's, it's a thing, but like, I have a lot of Jewish friends, not just Roseanne. I have a progressive Bernie Sanders, Jewish friend. I stayed at his house for weeks. We talk about banking. We talk about media. We, we have a blast in Hawaii. I have one of my best friends from back home is Jewish as well. He says more edgy stuff than I say. And it's hilarious. Like his, I love his family. They cook me steaks. Great family. They're just not snowflakes. So they, he's like a, he loves Jewish jokes, you know? And he's, it's just like, these are, this is like my reality outside of here. But then when I talk about Zionism or anything and related, people try to throw this straw man argument. And it's not just people who watch me. You got to understand the establishment on the Republican party they see my videos. They're 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 all over the place. But they 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 want to frame me as this anti-Semite or this far right person that I'm not. Similar to how Hotep tried to frame me as this Trump Sinka fan. I've never been. Where it's like they try to straw man that argument. Anytime you push back against their agenda, they say that you're trying to hurt everybody. But it's not true. Not in my personal life. Not in my philosophy. Even behind closed doors. If you catch me behind closed doors, you're not going to hear me say "f Jew." I hate them all. It's like no. I'm saying. I like a lot of Jews. I like Israelis. I like Israel. I have no problem with the people there. I just think that there's a disproportionate amount of degeneracy, media, banking, all this stuff in that community. And if I can't talk about it, then they're using that as a shield. And it's just true. It's like, uh, you know, this is maybe edgy to say for some people, 
But, you know, conservatives have, and I think Owen Benjamin brought this up to some extent, uh, but, you know, conservatives have no problem when you talk about black people and that you say 12% of the population is committing 50% of the crime to a liberal, that's racist. To a right winger, that's status quo. Candace says that they all say it. What if I were to say 2% is doing 60% of something, you know? What would people say then? They would call me an anti-Semite. So that just shows the hypocrisy of uh, the right wing. They're not truly anti-snowflake. They're anti-snowflake until you say certain things. Does that mean I'm hateful? I don't hate black people. I don't hate Jewish people. But I can read statistics and I can also call out Christians and call out white people. And doesn't mean I hate them. It means I am Christian and I want them to be stronger. Uh, so, you know, it's, uh, it's one of those things that you can't say. But I don't care. I don't. I have no problem saying it because when I say it, it doesn't come from hate. And a lot of people are hateful. There are people who hate Jews. There are people who hate Israel. I don't have that hate in my heart, so I feel comfortable saying it because you know I actually like people. But I, it's like I don't think letting black communities turn into like war zones it helps black people. Like if I'm just say, oh Chicago, it's really nice on the on the south side. No, it sucks there. And I'm guessing the people who live there would live a better life if they didn't live there. And people who don't live there wouldn't want to live there because it's it's like a war zone. It's like going to Iraq. So it doesn't doesn't mean you hate black people. It means you can identify gang violence and realize that in a moral, sane society, you wouldn't have an area of your country that looked like that. And it's the same thing with all this other stuff. You know, and I know I know moral people get it. People in Israel understand what I'm talking about. I have a lot of Jewish supporters. You know, it's 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 universal. It's like people who get it, get it. People who don't, don't. And there's statistics where you could see in certain communities where they're responsible for more stuff. It's debatable why that's happening. But I think in this country, you should be able to uh, speak about it. And I talk about Zionism a lot because no one else on the Republican Party talks about it. Do you know why? Because they're all don't want to talk about it or they get sent. even Hotep Jesus didn't want to talk about it. And he's, you know, independent or whatever he's doing. So you could see the topic that no one wants to talk about. He doesn't want to talk about it. Kirk won't talk about it. Shapiro won't talk about it. Most of these people, either they can't talk about it or they, you know, it's like, it's the, it's the thing that must not be said. Uh, but I'm not controlled. I'm not owned. I don't care. And uh, I'm not here to please the donors or, the establishment. I don't. I, I don't need to. I've, I'm fortunate enough to have built my own uh, platform, and if I lose it, saying that, whatever. Uh, you know, I lost it knowing that I never caved and I never said something I didn't believe in. Someone said they can't bite the hand that feeds. That's for sure a big part of it. No question. I mean, when you work at one of these big corporations, there's sponsors and donors, and I've seen it firsthand where it's like. If you question the sponsors or, or, or the premise of what they're trying to promote, it doesn't go well. It's the same It's the same reason why nobody's questioning the pharmacy industry on television anymore in politics. It's their biggest donor. It's not. I'm not anti-pharma. I'm not anti-medicine. I love good medicine. I don't like bad medicine. And I don't like propaganda and lockdowns and tyranny. So why, why is no politician questioning the product? Because that... <laughs> industry dominates media and politicians. So if your biggest sponsor is giving you $20 million a year in commercials, and then you question them and call them out, they'll pull their advertisements, right? You know, I think that's a, that's a big reason. It's the same, it's the same, uh, same premise with the pharmacy industry. So, you know, I appreciate the, the super chats. I'm not hateful. And I, I know people who watch me understand that. And you know, it's this, it's the same as Candace talking to like, you know, the, she doesn't hate people. I don't think, I don't know, but I don't, you know, I think she just wants to light a fire and be like, yo, stop doing all this stupid stuff. It's not helpful. All right. I'll answer a few more and I'll take off. I'll keep this under an hour though. I don't want to, I don't want to keep it too long. Hotep Jesus in the comments, dabbing on him. Someone said, like Brock Lesnar, I would drink a Budweiser because Coors ain't paying me nothing. Yeah, I, I laughed at, a, I think they moved the all, the MLB All-Star game to Coors Field. 
and it's the perfect hypocrisy. It's like they care so much about, you know, uh, black people that they don't want it to be in Atlanta. And then they move it to Colorado, but also beer. These are the big sponsors. Coors, beer, beer, fast food, high fructose corn syrup, uh, pharmacy products. These athletes and these industries are the biggest sellouts. They'll do anything. Uh, I think the problem is when they act like they have the moral high ground, you know, where it's like, at least if you're going to sell out and sell out your people, at least just do it and take me out to the ball game. Now, now they're doing, now they're selling out and acting like they're this moral, you know, savior of society. So thank you, Rachel. I, I got you. I appreciate you. Thank you, Rachel. I, I see you. <laughs> All right, I got to keep this under an hour. I only meant to be 30 minutes, but I do like chatting with people. I'll read some super chats. Uh, Narrowgate said, politicians have no bearing on the kingdom of God. Uh, God, excuse me, John, John 14, 6. Jesus said unto them, I am the way of truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but me. Thank you, Narrowgate. I appreciate you. I like when people drop me Bible quotes. It, it's it's a good vibe. It's like a, I have the Bible app on my phone. So every morning I wake up and they drop a gem on me. It's a good vibe. Thank you, Narrowgate, and you make me a better person. Promo the Made in the USA site. Yeah, I, I guess on my way out, uh, it's called usaproductsonly.com. So we're doing multiple things, but the main one, if you go to usaproductsonly.com, it's a farmer's market, a digital farmer's market for uh, USA businesses. And if you go there now, there's some bigger businesses, but most of them are people who follow me. So anybody who follows me, I'm trying to promote their businesses. We have maybe 50 businesses on there. We got a thousand emails. I'm still going through them. You, you see all the stuff I do. Uh, I'm, I'm doing that as well in my free time. It takes a long time, but we have toothbrushes. We have all this stuff, innovative stuff, cool things like rings, jewelry, food. I would check. I'm not saying check the food, but it's like a farmer's market where go to their website, check it out. I've done a thorough search, but, um, in general, that's, that's what it is. And, uh, I'm super pumped about it. Cause one, it's a good idea as far as making a place where you could find all USA products. But I love, like we, we launched it. It got a hundred thousand views, like within a week. And I'm getting emails from people who, who are like, dude, my traffic's exploding. People that we added that we didn't even email emailed us because they figured out that we were driving more traffic to their website. So we're, you know, it's a USA products only.com. We have a new site that we're working on too, but it's mostly uh, USA products and we're driving traffic revenue to small uh, USA made businesses and they keep a hundred percent. It's a farmer's market. You click, you go to their website, it's aggregate. So it's not a, it's not like we're, we're not even keeping any any part of it. You get all the money. You do all the shipping, all that. It's just we're just providing the platform so people can find you. It's pretty dope. So if you have a USA made business with USA products only, uh, you can go to usaproductsonly.com, check it out, and we're sifting through thousands of emails and uh, trying to pick the best companies that have established sales, established products, stuff like that. You know, we have a lot of options. So if you if you have an Etsy account with a thousand sales, you're in. If you can prove to me that you're passionate and you've at least made a few sales, and I could see that, you know, I, I'm pretty I'm pretty giving. But we want to just make sure you're legit, and we we don't want to sell trash products. So I I'm the final say. That that's why it's taking so long. I thoroughly look at every approved email, and I go to your website, I go to your Facebook, and I try to make a decision whether you get added or not. So I'm it's very uh, yeah usaproductsonly.com. Someone said Hotep and Anomaly are part of a larger cultural awakening. For sure. And I think, uh, you know, as I said before, the, the Hoteps are not NPCs. They're not, uh, they're not these people who just say Republican talking points. That's why I've always, they've always stood out to me. Even Pharaoh, before we got in a little argument about the, you know, the people who must not be named, I thought I would get along with him. People will say he's racist. I don't, it doesn't bother me unless you're being like, he was trying to be like, man, it's all your fault. It's like, that's just annoying. But as far as you having an opinion about white people, it's not going to bother me. I thought we were going to get along. But in general, I like, I like people that are NPCs. I like people that can uh, actually bring something else to the table. And I think that's what I always saw in the Hoteps that they were interested in diet, fitness, uh, calling out both parties. So, Hotep's in the chat. I, you know, I'm, 
Hotep is a, is a good businessman. I know he's got a lot of business, but he's also a master. He's a master magician. I still, and I'm not even just saying this to be like douchey. I still don't know if he meant what he was saying yesterday or he was just playing both sides for the grift. I, it's, it's a fascinating form of wizardry. Did I catch Biden? I don't listen to Biden. I don't, I should maybe listen to him, but I don't really care what he says. Hotel said, thank you. It's not, it's not my thing, but I am, I am perplexed. I am perplexed. And it also, like I said, I don't know if you just came in Hotel, but it's already driving a lot of traffic. I'm saying me and Dave Smith. Those are the two big videos. Me and Dave Smith. I was looking. We're we're dri we're driving the views. So we're 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 boosting the hotep economy with our libertarian ideology. Someone said, bitch ass avoiding super chats. What what did you super chat? I don't know. Um, let me see. Uh eyes open said focus. <laughs> You didn't have to call me a bitch ass, but that's kind of funny. I, I see your dude. I didn't purposely ignore it. Sorry. Uh, focus on the common ground. Finger pointing is absolutely pointless. United we stand, divided we fall. Figureheads don't weld the true power. I agree. I mean, he here's the thing though. From a marketing standpoint, as much as people saying finger point, you know, focus on common ground. One. I didn't start the finger pointing. I didn't start it. Hotep started it. I finished it. You know, he the whole the whole premise of his thing was like point to point point, and then I just held my ground. As far as you know, a debate. People like to watch debates, so you know it's like it's like a love hate relationship. Why do people watch the Kardashians? It's trash, but people love trash. You know, why do people eat McDonald's? It's easy. There's something about a debate that brings people's eyes. I know people don't want to see me and Hotep argue and take jabs and say stuff, but. In, in a way, I don't know. I, it's It could get ugly at times, I guess, in certain debates, but it is entertaining. It's like a, it's like a boxing match. That's why when I'm talking trash, he's, he's posting boxing stuff. When I'm in the debate, yes, I'm debating, and then I'm talking shit. I'm not trying to be rude, but it's like that's just what it is, especially when one person saying certain stuff. So I don't know. On, on one hand, it's like uh, I, I agree with you. Definitely look at solutions, common ground. That's what we ended it on. But as far as there is, there is a lane for debate and it's, you know, it's okay. It's okay to disagree. It's okay. You know, the right needs to unite, but at the same time, there needs to be more discussion. So when say like Charlie Kirk, unite the right, he did not, not like literally that group, unite the right, but you know, Charlie Kirk's like, we're uniting the right. Just not with those people, not with Hotep Jesus, not with, you know, Nick Fuentes, not with this person, not with Anomaly, whatever. You're not, you, you know, I'm not uniting under this guys. That's a phony, like, oh, we need to focus on common ground. Not if you're not doing anything. I'm not into socialism. You make socialism sucks stickers, but then you say nothing really about a year of social, you know, that there it's a balance of like, focus on solutions, focus on common ground. But at the same time, at a certain point, the right wing is going to need to stand their ground. You know, I think, I think they need to stand their ground. I think the left moves further left and the right moves further left. You know, they both, the, the, there's no, there's nobody on the right who's, who seems at this point, at least to really reverse that. And it, it'll happen, but it'll happen when the base holds, holds them accountable or at least stops playing along to the act. So I agree, definitely focus on solutions, focus on common ground, but it's like with the Trump thing, Everybody worshiping him, I think, backfired. I think people should have focused on common ground, but at the same time stood their ground. So, you know, I, don't, I mean, I hear what you're saying. Definitely, obviously, get along, peace, love, and positivity. But I think the right could benefit from certain people for standing their ground. And, you know, that's kind of what a debate is. Hotep Jesus uh, thought I was somebody or thought I said something. Once again, I don't know if he really thought that or he was just playing this actor role. Uh, and then I held my ground to say who I really am and what I really do and what I really think. Uh, so, you know, that's like it, you can you can unite. But if you're uniting around a false premise and, you know, I don't know that it's going to work. But someone said he's a comedian. He wasn't that funny yesterday, but I mean, he definitely is funny when him and when him and Uncle Hotep are being funny. It's very funny for sure. He's a funny guy. But yesterday he was not 
being funny, unless he was trying to pull like an Andy Kaufman. All right. I want uh, I went over an hour. Oh, well. Talk about Ron DeSantis. I, I, I want to I wanna keep this somewhat short. I don't, I guess now that it's over a minute or an hour, I could go like a couple more minutes, but I'm going to wrap this up in a second. What, Ron DeSantis, I think he's doing a better job than a lot of other Republicans, and I appreciate him. But to me, what I've been saying, even my last video, learn about Kerry Mullis. You don't have to read this book, but just check out the video. Check out his talks on PCR. And, you know, until we get to the root of that, we it's never going to end. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I don't I'm never getting a PCR test in my nose. I've never had it. I don't want them to jam a PCR test in my nose. I know too much about the test. I know too much about how it's going. So with DeSantis, I think he's doing a stand up job as far as a Republican politician goes. I would vote for him over Trump uh, 10 times out of 10. And there's a poll on Matt Walsh's thing, and most people feel that way. I know some people are really emotional about it, but you got to understand, you know, Trump did what he did. A lot of people appreciate him, but a lot of people are over it where it's like, you know, we we put our all or I, I, certain people put their all and it's like, go, go, go. And then, you know, he kind of just wasn't didn't do that. So a lot of people are ready for something new. And I don't even know that he's going to do that, but it's only going to go so far until the base wakes up to the point that him pushing vaccines and mass testing around DeSantis it's it's nice that he's not locking down, but at a certain point, people are going to have to expose the testing. It's all based on cases and testing. So for me as a media person, if I had a CNN channel, and in general, I do this, on, but like obesity, do an obesity ticker on Fox News. Say, look at all the deaths from obesity and show that they're more than COVID and show that people are getting fatter from COVID. That's how you beat the narrative. You say, dude, this is all based on a false premise. And I, I, I like what Ron DeSantis is doing. I appreciate it. But these tests are here to stay. This, this state uh, with the corporations and even in, you know, if you go to Orlando or you go to Miami, it's, it's not back to full normal. And it never, it never will be until enough people get to the root of it. And I'm not knocking DeSantis because he's doing a, a stand-up job, but you get what I'm saying? I'm not as an American, I don't want to live this half in half out lifestyle for the rest of my life. I don't want to be banned from cruises. I don't want to have to take temperature checks everywhere. I don't want to have to do, you know, PCR tests up my nose to go places. I don't, I don't want, I don't want to live that life. So I think if we want the America we had pre 2018, none of these politicians left or right have a real plan to get back there. They're doing just enough to, you know, toe the line, but at the same time, you know, giving us little goodies and stuff. But, um, Someone said, have you forgiven your mother? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I love my mother. I've forgiven my mother. No question. Yeah, I don't. I'm in a great relationship with my parents. And I I've, I did that maybe like 10 years ago. And it's it's like Jesse Lee Peterson says, it's really crucial. I did it before I even knew about Jesse, but that's one of his things. He says, have you forgiven your mother? And, uh, you know, that changed my life before I even heard Jesse. When I was like 24, 23, I was always spiteful. And I, I had this energy where I was, you know, I was young, I was feisty and no, no question. I have forgiven my mother. And it was a, it was a life changing moment. Cause it's like, you know, once you stop using things as excuses and you appreciate your parents, uh, it's, it's a game changer. So I love that Jesse preaches that message. Cause it's very true. Um, I'm gonna read one more super chat and I'm gonna take off. I don't, I don't want to talk about this all day. I said everything I need to say. Um, Ray, Rack, Rack Lucha said Hotep was rude, disrespectful, condescending, and a hypocrite. How people don't see is beyond me. Thank you for always speaking the truth. God bless. Yeah, I, I, like he's in the chat now. I, you know, it might be his little act. He's like an actor, magician. You know, he's playing this side, he's playing that side. He's being rude. He's being condescending, but then he acts like I, you know, his base acts like I start. It's a good show, but I think you know, I think honest people will watch the debate. Like I said, and uh, you know, for people who rewatch this video, I've already said it from. The, you know, minute one to minute 40. So I'm not going to repeat myself, but I think honest people can watch the debate and see who dominated logically, factually, who became rude and disrespectful first and who finished it like a man and just said, I just destroyed you. And, you know, you, you know, I'm not going to be, I'm not submitting to this idea that you're this, you know, all seeing overlord when you literally <laughs> debated pro Trump for 30, 40 minutes, lost the debate miserably flip-flopped and then said, I knew he was a puppet the whole time. And you didn't inaccurately talked about me. And then, 
it's it's an L. It's a huge L for Hotep Jesus, but it's a W for his channel. So that's the type of person. I always bring up It Man. It's a good, it's a good movie. I'm, I'm going to end it on this. In the movie It Man, he was starving and he had a fight with the general. And they told him, if you fight the general and you win, we're going to kill you. Uh, so you should purposely lose. But It Man had honor. He said, I'm not going out. A I'm not purposely losing anything for monetary or financial gain. And he won the battle despite the death threats if he won. That's something called honor. And that's something called courage. And that's something that's missing in this country. So maybe Hotep Jesus just played devil's advocate and purposely lost a debate and flip-flopped and did ad hominems and talked to me passive aggressively and condescending. Maybe he just did it for the grift because only me and Dave Smith bring revenue to his channel. He can't get that many clicks without us. But that just says what type of person you are. And it's no disrespect, but I'm an honorable person. I don't, I wouldn't lose to get a, a views because I don't need to. I already got 2 million views on a, you know, Carrie Mullis video this week, Facebook, Instagram. You look at some of my videos. I don't even need to talk about Trump. I can get millions of views, but he can't get views without me or Dave Smith. So I feel like he probably threw the fight or lied or played this acting role to get a grift. But that's, that's the difference between honor and not. It's like what, you need a couple hundred bucks, just give me your PayPal, I'll send you money, you know, and you don't have to lose a battle or, you know, flip flop and act like an arrogant hypocrite. But some people are willing to do that. That's, you know, they want money, they want fame. And I don't want either. I don't need either. But I get both of them because I think God rewards me because I, you know, I stand firm in what I believe. I mean what I say. And I think Dave Smith does too. That's why he brings more views than Odeb Jesus brings to his own channel. So what does that say when it's, you know, when other people are the only in the last three months, the only things that people want to watch on your channel are when you interview other people. I think that speaks volumes. So overall, you know, that's the message of the day. And in general, if more people had honor in this country, uh, you know, we wouldn't be where we're at. But cowardice is uh, at an all time high and people think it's like a normal thing to do. And then when you do have honor, you do have integrity or you do have courage, you know, people look down at you or make excuses for other people doing the same. And uh, I think that's a problem in this country. I think uh, when well, evil flourishes, when good men do nothing. So the more people that, you know, will stand up for what's right, regardless of the consequence, this would all go away quickly. But, you know, watch the movie It Man. If you've never seen it, fantastic movie. And it really hones what I'm saying together. It's like there's two types of people in this world. People who will purposely lose, you know, for financial or, you know, uh, life gain. And people who are willing to die for what they believe. And in that movie, I don't want to ruin it, but he ended up living. So it's like you, you're willing to sacrifice it all, knowing that it's not, it doesn't mean you're just killing yourself. It's like going in a boxing match. You could get knocked out and your brain could, you know, be damaged, but you're not hoping for that. Muhammad Ali, like he knew every fight he went in. It could be his last. Every MMA fighter, every fight they go in, they know it could be their last fight. But if they were cowards, they would say, oh, I could get hurt, so I don't want to do it. It's like that's that's anything in this life. So, you know, there's different type of people uh, who are willing to sacrifice their body, their, you know, whatever, for what's right. Um, God bless you guys. God bless America. God bless your family. God bless the world. It's another win. You know, I'm just stacking up wins in the debate, and eventually – somebody will hopefully, you know, do better, but it's, it's kind of hard when people base their whole arguments on false premises, flip-flops, ad hominem attacks, uh, and an acting flip-flopping thing just for clout. It's tough. I don't know. One day, you know, I'll, I'll meet my match as far as debates until then another knockout within 40 minutes, the debate was over complete domination, logically, spiritually, mentally. Have a beautiful day, guys. I'll be back with more videos soon. I appreciate you guys so, so much.